Welcome back, I'm Cosmo. Today, I'll be going over 10 questions and answers that were asked during the KSP2 AMA with Nate Simpson. This was done on Discord Live this morning. I'm also gonna be going over the patch two notes that Nate Simpson has put out as far as a preliminary on what to expect for patch two. So without further ado, let's get at it. <laughs> I'm totally normal. Why would you ask that? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Uh, alone, case B2 alone, like it's just me making it? Is that what they're implying? I, I yes, programming this entire game by myself has, has been brutal. Uh, no, man, this is fun. We're living the dream. I, I, it's, it's hard for me to fully express how it feels like I am living in a dream. You, if you get the cow chocolate, it's my favorite cereal, you put the milk on top of that, and then you eat the cereal, and then you have a chocolate milk treat at the end of that. Well, next one from user Porbus. Now that we have a boat launch option, is it likely that we'll get a dedicated boat or submersible parts at some point in the future? Yep, as part of the new buoyancy spec, um, there, the, you know, ballast parts and fluid pumps are 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 in the mix there. So there would very likely be some specialized parts, probably interacted with within the uh, resource manager, where you're you're trans transferring fluids from the surrounding medium into and out of your vehicle. I'm already a fan of the resource manager that's in the game. I like that I can change fuel from one tank to another by refueling it. It helps. It takes that little bit of extra fuel that I have in that main stage from stage one to put it into use so I don't waste my fuel. I like resource management. Knowing the devs are planning to add more, or not more, but add fluid pumps, ballast, and specialized parts to interact with the resource manager is exciting to me. I like being able to manage things within my gameplay. I'm curious how we'll gather these resources and I hope we'll have refineries to convert raw materials into a usable resource. As far as submarines and boats, I think it's pretty awesome. There's a game called Stormworks, which has great mechanics and it goes way more in depth than KSP does in the build process of everything and you actually have to make your own engines and there's different parts to the engine you don't just have an engine that you slap on you actually engineer a working engine and you can create boats planes helicopters it's a very fun game if you haven't heard of it definitely a game to check out this is user nitro also from the discord in regards to the decision to leave wobbly rockets within the game, are there plans to make this feature more detrimental to rocket design to rocket design and progression? Or is this simply an early implementation of something that will become more elaborate and significant? This is a really good example of how uh, having something in early access helps us uh, prioritize and focus on the right things. Um, this is obviously a very hot topic within the community, and it's also something that is frequently discussed within the team. Um, I will describe my general goal for this. Um, when something is very skinny and made of many stacked parts, it should wobble. Um, I think that if we were to move completely beyond rigid body physics, that we will have we would have um, you know kind of subverted one of the things that's very fun and funny about this game. Um, do we want larger vehicles? Do we want our interstellar vehicles to be wobbling around? Do we want stuff that's larger than, a, than let's say, the 3.75 meter core size to be wobbling all over the place? We do not. We are not happy with the current wobbliness of the vehicles. Um, so uh, this is an area of current focus and, and heavy iteration and testing, um, and it will get better. Currently, I can go into my game and toggle options within the game and customize my difficulty options. While testing rockets and not wanting to spend the time to strut everything, because we don't have an auto strut feature, I'll enable unbreakable joints. It's a very useful feature within the game already. The rocket slash craft will still be wobbly. It just won't break apart. I use this feature to analyze where my craft is weak and how I can make it more structurally sound. By far the best strutting technique I've used is to strut decouplers together. When the decoupler fires, the strut breaks and all is good. It helps keep some of the payloads stable that I've made. So if you are struggling with how to counter wobbly rockets because your payloads are going all over the place, try strutting between those decouplers and that should alleviate some of the 
pain that you're experiencing before they patch and make things better. I'm thankful that they're taking this seriously and they're wanting to get this to work better. Hopefully in patch two or three, this is something that is addressed and fixed. Birch Mallard Ban, what suggestion from the community do you think were helpful? Yeah, I mean, we talked a little bit about this. The, the, the prominence of the Wobbly Rocket conversation has been pretty illuminating. Uh, super helpful to learn user experience pain points. Where does the UI work? Where does it not? Where do people get stuck? Um, the community's really been helping us shine a light on, on where we need to improve. Really enjoy both games. I play KSB1 heavily modded, and as KSB2 gets more mods, I will play it heavily modded. I like my games modified, and I really love the modding community and what these modders come up with. It's a fun to be a part of and to incorporate some ideas and share with the modders to see what they'll make, but also highlight what these modders do and how they make the game have longevity. It's part of KSP is that core modding community. And with that, the community has kind of felt split between KSP1 and KSP2. I've seen some heated debates. I've posted some stuff on Reddit that pissed a lot of people off. Uh, and I think a lot of the frustrations we have were taken out on each other. I want KSB2 to succeed. I know it's been a messy launch. I'm thankful they're working hard at this game. I have confidence they'll continue to improve things. I need to be better at being more critical on the game and in my feedback. Uh, our next question here is from RavenX1984. Will rotors have hinges? Rotors and hinges be coming back at some point. Yeah, it's a it's part of the post 1.0 conversation. I would like them to. Rotors and hinges. I really want these back. Post 1.0 means it's quite a way away. That's unfortunate that it's going to take so long. I really enjoy rotors and hinges in KSP1. It allows for better to design crafts. We'll have to wait and see what they add with this feature and when. With interstellar options, I don't see how you could build an interstellar vehicle without rotors and hinges. It severely limits your options on the crafts you build and how they fold. If you don't have these in the game, building a huge colony-sized ship in orbit means nothing because you can't make it smaller when it needs to be when it's traveling. So... This is something I hope they actually make a priority and work on sooner rather than later, preferably before 1.0. Awesome. Uh, our next one is from Deb Deb, uh, also from Discord. What has been the most challenging feature to work on? So sort of the same question. Yeah, I mean, for me, obviously, tutorials. Uh, for the team, um, I mean, I think probably the primary technical challenge was adapting the architecture for interstellar scale uh accelerating trajectories uh you know time warp under acceleration uh and then of course multiplayer um that is a gigantic uh engineering ask and touches every part of the game and makes it so that there's no such thing as a simple or easy change um there's just a lot of complexity under the hood um so that's made all of the features challenging to work on uh but uh, again, we're, we're making huge progress. I'm glad they're making progress. And it showed with patch one, they really have shown that they're making progress on difficult things. So with multiplayer, I'm really looking forward to it. If you've ever tried to make a multiplayer game, you already know how much of a nightmare it is. I can't imagine trying to get the entire functionality of KSP2 and making it work seamlessly with three other players. From what Nate has said, it sounds like we'll have up to four players in one session. There will only be four landing sites on Kerbin for multiplayer, which is what leads me to think multiplayer will be limited to four total. That means it should be better for the host, which I don't know how they're going to do the hosting, but hopefully we can host our own servers, add mods, you know, do whatever we want to. I'm already planning on starting my own server when multiplayer comes out, if it's something we're able to even do, which I hope we could make our own servers. That would make things so much fun. I already plan on making my own, like I said, and I look forward to it. We'll see when it comes out. Cool. Our, uh, our next one is from also from the Discord, MasterChef117. How has community feedback shaped your vision and priorities for the game? 
Uh, I mean, I think it depends how far back we're we're going with community feedback. Like, I've been a, mem a member of the community for so long, so the whole wish list of features that I brought to the beginning of the project was probably heavily influenced by conversations that I took part in in the community. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we're in pretty good alignment on a lot of those things. Um, more recently, uh, you know, obviously this feedback helps us to prioritize. Um, the wobbly rockets thing is a really good example. Um, you know, one one weirdly and unexpectedly cool thing about uh, having the community giving us their feedback is that it keeps us from over focusing on things that turn out not to actually be a major issue for the community. Like you, you never really know, you know, what is palatable or what's going to bug someone or and sometimes someone internally and I, I'm probably chief among among them, you know, I'll over index on something that's just irritating to me. And it, it and it's good to have context that, oh, you know what, this is just you, Nate, like, most people are fine with this thing. So why don't you focus on the things that people would like to see improve in the short term? So it's been very helpful in that way. I do like that they're taking our feedback, they're taking it seriously, and they're using it kind of as a metric to figure out, you know, what really needs to change because it's game breaking, which they know, but also just with the players, like what what we want, what we need, immediate to enjoy the game they've addressed a lot of that with patch one and it shows it keeps showing that they do care they are listening to us and they're not blowing us off and as far as feedback everyone's feedback is important it's not just content creators that you know speak up and say things actively use the forums and use reddit and use discord like everyone like all of you have been doing keep sharing what bothers you about the game and what doesn't because what might not seem that big of a deal to me may be a big deal for majority of the players and what may be you know a big deal to me some of you may not even care about you may not even go oh that that's not my top 10 that's okay it's not meant to say hey this is how it should work for everybody it's me giving my feedback and going hey here's the things that I think need to get worked on and looked at and I do look forward to hearing what everyone else has to say and being able to collaborate and let the devs know, hey, here's the feedback we got from this AMA because you're asking us for our feedback. Uh, from the Discord, uh, will certain resources needed will certain resources needed for colony construction to be planet biome specific? Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's that diversity of resources that's going to make exploration mode um, so fun. Uh, you know, instead of the goals being um, you know, ASP1, for the most part, with the exception of contracts and career mode, for the most part, the things that you set as your own goals are, are self-directed. Um, and, and when they're not self-directed, they're kind of dry, right? Like take the temperature at 20,000 meters at such and such latitude and longitude. Um, when there is a unique resource somewhere uh, that... Um, that gates your access to a category of parts and exists in only one location that is very hard to get to, especially if that location represents a unique physics challenge against which you're going to have to design a new vehicle architecture. Um, wow, it just totally changes the game. At that point, uh, you're getting something material, a literal material, uh, by going to that location. So um, yeah, the the interplanetary and then the interstellar progression is really, I think, in a pop um, when, when, yeah, when you're able to dig up a specific thing that gives you a specific ability. Colony resource management. This is something that I'm really looking forward to. I love resource management in games. Having a diversity of resources in an exploration mode. I'm, I'm wondering if like science mode is getting replaced with exploration mode or if it's a new game mode they're adding. We'll find out. I like that they're wanting to make resources specific to certain biomes. It changes the game. Now I have a reason to go to all these biomes instead of just to collect science and never go to that biome ever again. I'm hoping I get the North Pole and South Pole of Duna where there's ice caps. I'm hoping we can like collect ice and find biosignatures of an alien species or something. Uh, and be able to do the science 
with the equipment they gave us, all the science stuff they gave us, with drills and whatever else they had. I hope that it actually has some meaning to it. It's not just, you know, hey, we collected science, but hey, now you found this resource and I had to figure out how it works and how you use it. And hopefully with all the extra parts they're going to supposedly add into the game for resource management, that means we have ways to, you know, create a refinery system where we gather different resources from certain biomes because only certain biomes have those resources. So then we create a little refinery system and we're able to then go interstellar or whatever the case. So it's got a lot of potential. I hope they get it implemented well and it makes sense. We'll see. And it's one of those, it sounds really good. And I get really excited about it and passionate about it because resource management, I, I don't know why, I just do enjoy it a lot. Uh, but I don't want to get too excited. So I want to remain a bit skeptical on what to expect from the resource management. Next one from Munch42. How, how useful will orbital construction be and how awesome are the colonies? Completely critical to the interstellar progression. You cannot make a proper interstellar vehicle inside a gravity well. They're just too big. Um, now someone will prove me wrong and make an interstellar vehicle, like and launch it from KSC, and, and uh, I wish them luck. Will there be secret launch sites added or will we build, a cus build custom launch pads on other planets? Uh, okay, two answers for that one. Um, on Kerbin, the plan is to have four separate agency launch sites that are basically four different KSCs equidistantly placed around the equator. Um, that's for multiplayer. Um, and then, uh, obviously, colony vehicle assembly buildings are, are launch pads on other planets. You, so you can place one anywhere you want to once the colony system's online. So colonization. Picking somewhere within Kerbal that you can then establish a colony so you know how colonization works to then gather the resources that you need to then go interstellar. I really hope that they deliver with the colonization aspect of the game. I think it changes everything and it will be what defines KSP2 versus KSP1. KSP1 is great. I love it. I play it heavily modded. But KSP2 has so much potential and I'm hoping that they deliver like they did on patch one next one from tancho which aspect of development or which upcoming feature do you really think will make the game unique when compared to ksp1 do you think the current performance problem will stick around or become more prominent as new features are being added uh i mean the of course the current performance problems will not stick around i mean they're they're going down daily um and of course, they need to be very aggressively addressed because perf optimization is critical for the arrival of colonies and interstellar. And, and then multiplayer takes all of those things and multiplies them. Uh, so, yeah, uh, those, those performance problems will, will always be a thing that we're constantly pursuing and, and improving. One here from uh, Mo Eggs. What is the reason behind not allowing early access players the ability to use the debug menu? Since it's a sandbox game, its submission seems odd, especially for early access. Will it be included at some point for single player campaigns? Yeah, so um, those debug controls have mostly been added, uh, you know, for internal developer purposes, um, but they have not necessarily been subjected to the same quality assurance process or even a structured design validation process that we want to see for something public facing. Um, so uh, especially because some systems that you might not expect to break do get broken when you use things like teleportation, um, the presence of those debug controls introduces this huge additional factor against which we need to uh, when, when we're reviewing bug reports, for example, if we discover that that something is taking place as a result of of a failed teleportation or something, it's just it adds a bunch of new variables that at the moment we don't want to be tracking. Um, I do think we want there to be a sanctioned uh, debug con debug menu for players, but uh, our our sketchy internal version is is not ideal, and we'd rather not add that into the mix. Debug. I understand why Nate is hesitant on adding a debug 
as it further complicates things. I have this at number one because the ability to debug and look at what happened allows me to know how I can fix the issue. If I can't fix it because it's not something on my system that's causing it, then it's something obviously in the code of the game. It provides me a way to communicate that to the devs with more detail. It provides better bug reports. We not only can provide video and written bug reports, but being able to have the debug console, it shows us an error or where something occurred. It gives us questions. It allows us to give it back to the devs and go, hey guys, this is what I saw, this is what happened. Can you recreate it? I think it's very much needed to be implemented into the game. All right, so that's my top 10 from the AMA. Some of my thoughts and feedback on the AMA. Please share in the comments. Please share in Discord, on the forum. Share your feedback with the devs. It's going to help make the game much better. Now moving on to patch 2, the dev update for today. This is what Nate has said. While it'll be tough to beat the sheer number of fixes that went into patch 1, we're seeing quite a few big ones go down. In patch 2, we are still pulling a couple of late breaking improvements into that build. Once we've got it in QA's hand, we should be able to give you a date. And of course, full patch notes will be posted when the build goes public. Until that time, here are a few things that already checked into patch 2. So these are things that are going to, going to be in patch 2. Fixed loss of vehicle on reference frame change when physics school. Fixed loss of fixed loss of vehicle on reference frame change when physics less parts present. Fixed flamed out engines not restarting properly. Enabled switching between vehicles and atmospheric flight. Recovered Kerbals now return to VAB Kerbal Manager, which is kind of nice. Gave click priorities to planets rather than moons when zoomed out in map view. Love that because that gets really annoying. Struts and fuel lines no longer broken after cloning, subassembly, and VAB. Oh, this is my favorite one. Literally, I get so annoyed that I have to constantly reattach them if I've taken a subassembly apart and put it back together. So I'm very glad that that's going to be fixed. Fixed bug, vessels with no control deleted during save. Fixed flowers on Kerbin. I like it. We can actually see flowers. Added next button to seizure warning screen. That's kind of convenient. Height fog added to all atmospheres. Updated parking garage collisions and various CPU and GPU optimizations to improve performance. So again, they are addressing performance with each update and I'm appreciative of that. Of note, what's interesting to me out of these notes is something simple, but the added next button to seizure warning screen, there's a mod currently that allows you to skip that entirely. Just so you know, you can go to spacedoc.info and look up that mod. It's pretty useful. Uh, the biggest one for me is going to be that struts and fuel lines and then the priority to planets rather than moons. Should work out pretty nicely. And I'm curious what the CPU and GPU optimizations are going to be. I have been keeping track of my performance on my computer. I have an issue with my capture card. It records in 1080p, 60 FPS, but it's a 4K pass-through. It's not allowing my 4K to actually pass through at 144 hertz. It uh, makes it be, it puts sets it at 60 uh, frames for my 4K pass-through, even though I have a 144 hertz monitor. I do have a second capture card uh, that's a 4K capture card. I may be switching to that uh, so I can actually get footage uh, beyond 60 frames in 4k so we'll see how that goes other than that please leave a like share comment and let me know and also tell the devs what are some of your biggest complaints feedbacks things that you want to see fixed in patch two three four and end of the game within the next this year thanks have a great day